A lot of people ask for a TXR8 stock analysis. So here we are. Texas Roadhouse stock is up almost 24% year to date, massively outperforming the S&P 500. And earnings really boosted the momentum for TXRH, where they reported an EPS of $1.08, beating the analysis estimations by a small margin. The revenue was reported at $1.16 billion, also beating the analysis estimations by a small window. And people love TXRH stock for different reasons, and one of them is the dividend. And I understand why, with dividend yields at 1.65% and 17% growth rate in the past 5 years. And if we look at the total returns in the past 5 years, we see that Texas Roadhouse stock massively outperforms the S&P 500. So could this be the perfect time to buy TXRH stock? Well, by the end of the video I will give you my trade price targets, so make sure to stay tuned and see how I build up to these price targets. And more importantly, which price target is the most justified in my opinion? I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does TXRH do? Texas Roadhouse is the restaurant company operating in the casual dining segment. The company's operating segment includes Texas Roadhouse, Bobas 33 and others. It generates maximum revenue from the Texas Roadhouse segment. And Texas Roadhouse reported a revenue of 1.16 billion, up 15.3% year over year. And this is looking really good to me especially since the net income increased 21%, so margins are increasing here. Revenue growth is in line with the full year numbers, and net income is increasing at a higher pace right now. For Texas Roadhouse it is really easy to generate more revenue by just opening new stores. However, you want the existing stores to grow in revenue as well. So the comparable sales is a really important number here. And TXRH reported a 9.9% comparable sales increase, which is looking really good. The margins are increasing, which I just mentioned before, which is something that I really like. There were 12 new company owned restaurants opened and 7 franchise restaurants. On top of that, TXRH bought back around 40.7k shares, which is really awesome. For the full year outlook, management expects positive comparable sales growth, which seems a bit conservative. Store week growth of 8%, which is really nice. And TXRH also increased the dividend with 11%, which is also really nice. They keep on increasing the dividends at a high pace. And year over year, we see that TXRH keeps opening new stores. In 2022 they had a total of 697 restaurants, of which are 552 Texas Roadhouse owned. In 2023 they had 741 restaurants in their portfolio, an increase of 44 new restaurants. They opened 30 company owned TXRH restaurants, which is really nice. And now that we know a bit more about the company, it's time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week. And also join my Discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free, so don't miss it out. Let's continue by diving into the fundamentals. Texas Roadhouse stock is a 9.9 .9 billion market cap company. PE ratio is at 33, indicating they could be overvalued right now. Later in this video I will show you my 3 price targets for TXRH stock, so make sure to watch until the end. And in the meantime, please let me know your thoughts on the current valuation on Texas Roadhouse. And I'm also interested to hear your thoughts in general on this company. Revenue is at 4 billion, and in this graph we see that revenue went up really steady and consistent. Of course there is the impact of the lockdown periods, but other than that it looks really good. Margins are going up in the long run, which is something that I really like. 
Again, we see the impact during the lockdown periods. EPS is looking really good, it is similar to the revenue and margins, which is nice. Analysis expected EPS will increase at a high pace, around 13-17% to 17 per year. To me, this looks really good. For the revenue, analysis expect also pretty high numbers. On average, you're looking at 8-9% to 9 growth per year. Again, looking good to me. Return on assets is sitting at 7.9%, which is a decent number. Return on equity looks really good. And the most important number, return on invested capital, is sitting at 10.7%, which is a really great number. It is also higher versus the 5 year average, which is a good thing. Current ratio is at 0.48, which is a decent number, nothing really special to mention here to be honest. Right now, Texas Roadhouse has 743 million in debt. And I prefer companies that can pay down at least a big chunk of their total debt with the total cash. TXRH has 104 million in total cash, so they can't pay down all their debt. This is something that I don't like. So, it is very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt, of course, but also to buy big shares, pay dividends, and all other things. And here we see that free cash flow is going up in the long run. However, it is again not really steady and consistent. We also see the impact during the lockdown periods. Shares outstanding are decreasing, which is something that I really like. However, with the current share price at a premium, there might be better things to do with the cash than buying back shares. But when shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio, and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyways, dividend yield is sitting at 1.65%, which is a decent number. Annual payout is at $2.44, and payout ratio is around 49%. I prefer 50% or lower, so right now they have 51% left in cash to buy back shares, pay down debt, do acquisitions, and all other things. The 5 year growth rate is at 17%, which is a great number. On top of that, they increased the dividends for quite some years. However, in the lockdown periods, they cut the dividend, hence why we see only one consecutive year of dividend increases. In here, we see the dividends paid since 2012. You see that TXRH did increase the dividends at a high pace. As mentioned, during the lockdown periods, they cut the dividend. Right after things cooled down, they increased to historical levels. Payout ratio is a very important metric with dividends, it tells you if the dividends are safe. In here we see that payout ratio is really steady and consistent around 50%, except for the lockdown periods of course. To me this looks pretty decent. In this graph we see the expected dividends in 2024, 2025 and 2026. Of course this is an estimation and can be highly impacted by results, but it gives you a rough indication it's expected to increase at a similar rate versus previous years. Overall, these dividends look really good to me, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare TXRH stock with the overall market. In this case, the S&P 500. Next to that, I added Domino's and Wendy's. On the 5-year chart, we see that TXRH massively outperforms the S&P 500. In total, TXRH returned 145%, including dividends. The S&P 500 is sitting at 95%, and Wendy's had the lowest return with 17%. On the one-year chart, things look pretty interesting, with TXRH again beating all stocks in this list by quite a difference. In total, TXRH returned 43% while the S&P 500 is second with 24% return. On the 6 month chart it is again TXRH that is having a massive return with 41%, versus the S&P 500 sitting at almost 15%. Wendy's is really having a bad time here. On the 1 month chart it is again TXRH crushing everyone in this list, also because of the earnings that were released. So bottom line, TXRH beats the S&P 500 and others in this list, in the long run and in the short run. 
So could this be the perfect time to buy TXRH stock? Well, let's check the three price targets that are created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the three price targets, starting off with the revenue growth. For the revenue growth I'm filling in 6, 8 and 10 percent, based on the historical performance, their own outlook, but also because of the analysis. For the profit margin I'm putting in 6.5, 7 and 7.5 percent. For the free cash flow margin I'm putting in slightly lower numbers. For the PE ratio I'm putting in 20, 22 and 24. For the price to free cash flow I'm putting in the same numbers again. In my opinion Texas Roadhouse has a unique concept in growing at a high pace while maintaining control of the situation. My desired annual return is 12.5% since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now TXRH stock is around $147. I hit analyze and we see a lot of red numbers. We have a low price target of $65 to $77, we have a mid price target of $88 to $102 and we have a high price target of $118 to $136. To me the high price target is the most justified here, meaning the stock is overvalued based on these numbers. So what do you think is the most justified price target here? Let me know in the comments down below. My final conclusion on TXRH is that the stock has tanked a lot lately. They keep on performing very well and investors seem to like it. Most fundamentals look really good to me, especially the consistent performance is something that I really like. From a dividend point of view things look pretty good, they pay a solid yield and keep on increasing the dividends at a high pace. From a value point of view things don't look that good right now. And to be honest, I think it wasn't too conservative when filling in the numbers for the price target. For now I will keep analyzing them from time to time. I already have a few shares of TXRH in my portfolio and at the current valuation it doesn't seem like a great deal. However, I do think it's an amazing company. And remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about a stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.